Reigning my life.
confront I can I am convicted when you lovingly correct and rebuke me I repent my mind is alert to your word my heart is receptive to your word my body is responsive to your word my will is submissive to your word. My attitude is aligned to your word. I recognize my men of God as God's conduit, as God's mouthpiece, as my prophet. Speak through his mouth. I willingly place myself under the microscope of your word. Search me, O oh God, as I sit under the ministry of your word. I am daily becoming a true reflection of your word. I am what your word declares of me to be. I can do what your word has capacitated me to do. 
I can have what your word declares I can have. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, it shall be so and never otherwise. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. May I take this time and greet the saints in the matchless name of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Greeting to every one of you that is present today in this house, in the house of the Lord. In the house of grace, a Davidic house. I welcome all of you. This is the church where everybody is somebody. God does not visit here, but God lives here. You are all warmly welcomed. And I want to take this time and convey my greetings to all those that are watching us on YouTube, on Facebook, all those that are catching us live on all our social media channels. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will all rejoice and be glad in this day. And I believe that after this word today, all our lives are never ever going to be the same again as we stay put and hear what God has in store for us. This is part number two of the message that I preached last week, a call to repentance. Part number two. The Lord is calling us to repentance. The text says in the book of Acts 17.30, the Bible says the Lord God has overlooked the times of ignorance. But now he calls all men from everywhere to repent. So God is calling not only his church to repentance, but God is calling the entire world to himself. A call to repentance is a call to come to God. Now COVID-19 invasion became an intense spiritual attack against the church. It was an attack against fellowship, an attack against our spiritual health. COVID-19 was a real battle to the church of God, even to the entire world. So in every battle, there are always casualties. It is normal that in every battle, you find casualties. The battle that we fought or that we've been fighting, it is no exception. It is in the nature of battles to have casualties. Now, battle casualties are normally characterized or are normally categorized into two. Number one, you will have permanent casualties. Those are the ones who got hurt and injured in the battle and never recover. They remain permanent casualties of that battle. May you not remain a permanent casualty to COVID-19. The second category, we've got temporary casualties. Those are the ones who get injured in the battle. They've got scars to show that they've been in the battle, but they choose to bounce back. They choose not to remain victims in a situation, but they choose to rise above the circumstances and become victors of a situation. So those are two types of casualties in every battle. COVID-19 was an orchestrated battle against the church. It was cooked in hell. Well orchestrated. It was against mainly the church of God. You will understand why I don't say it was against the world. It was an orchestrated attack against the church. This is because the church is God's main vehicle for change in the world. If God wants to do something in the world, he uses no one but the church. God never consults governments, but he consults prophets. 
When God wants to birth any change in the world, he does it through his main vehicle, the church. The church is God's only means of communicating with the world. So that's why I said COVID-19 was a direct attack against the church. The church is the only main machinery that should facilitate godly transformation in the world. For God to transform the world, he uses his body on earth and the church is the body. He never uses government and president and politicians, but he uses the church. That is why South Africa is where it is, because as a church, we engage in prayers. For any evil to prevail, it takes the church not to pray. For any evil to prevail, it takes the church not to pray, not government. So the church is God's main machinery for change in the world. So COVID-19 was a direct attack against the church. So the devil thought that COVID-19 would destabilize the church and disturb the agenda of God. Oh my God, he was so wrong. Here we are, we are back again. He thought he could destabilize the church so that he can affect the agenda of God. Our prophetic agenda that God has given us moves on. It lives on. What the devil did not know, it is that God's purposes can never be stopped. The Bible says the purposes of God can never be thwarted. COVID-19 or not, but the purposes of God stands and they shall be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Now, since fellowship or coming together, fellowship is more like our spiritual ventilation as a body of Christ. It was cut off, like the switching off of energy supply. Most believers are no longer walking in Christ, but they are limping in Christ. We are coming from a battle. We are all affected in one way or the other. The whole thing shook the whole world. No one became an exception, including the church. So fellowship was attacked. We could not fellowship any longer because of this attack. What is fellowship? Fellowship is an act of being together for mutual benefit. We were stopped by the pandemic of being together for mutual benefit. When we fellowship, we benefit from each other. When that fellowship is cut off, one of our lifelines are cut off. It became the survival of the fittest. Some believers, some are people who are in the COVID-19. That's why Paul says, introspect yourself. So fellowship was cut off. This period was the greatest test of your spiritual stability. So fellowship was cut off. One of our main source of supply of life was cut off. That is why David says in the book of Psalm 122, verse 1, David says, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There is something in the house of the Lord. But COVID-19 cut that off. The devil thought Jesus is only in the church building. But my God, he was wrong. He forgot that we are mobile altars of God. We are altars that are in motion. This is a stationary altar, but we are mobile altars. We are altars on the go. Why Christian fellowship? Marazango Christian Lilo. Mobas Nama Alta Hambayo. It 
it is through fellowship that we can be provided with a spiritually vibrant, empowering environment. The environment is key. It is spiritually vibrant and spiritually empowering. That is the benefit of fellowship. Satan is a cutter off. It is through fellowship that we can experience the atmosphere of revival. Satan is a cutter off. What I'm going to deprive them revival experience, I'm cutting off fellowship. Fellowship. Through it, we can be spiritually ignited. We keep each other in flames. Fellowship is critical. But that was attacked. It is through fellowship that we can encourage one another. Masses and cons when we connect, we've got relationships, we encourage one another. That lifeline was cut off. The devil thought that's how I'm gonna cause the church to suffocate and destroy the work of God on earth. It is through fellowship that we pray for one another. It is through fellowship that we can physically express and receive love from one to another. Fellowship. It is through fellowship that you can have an experience of practical praise and worship. You need fellowship to provide that environment. So the devil cut off that lifeline and said, I'm going to kill them. It was a mission launched against the church of God. So church, given the roughness of COVID-19 battle, some of us suffered spiritual erosion. When you talk about erosion, erosion refers to a gradual but short destruction of something. It is something that gradually gets destroyed. So some of us, because of COVID-19 battle, have suffered spiritual erosion. When, when, you, when you get eroded spiritually, erosion we have lost their sense of spiritual sensitivity. They are now spiritually numb because of erosion. These are truths we can never avoid. We need to confront them so we could repent. Some people's prayer lives got eroded. Your prayer life has been cut off. Because of spiritual erosion. Because of spiritual erosion. The zeal for the things of God subsided. In some believers, it even disappeared. The zeal for the things of God. In the hunger for the things of God. Spiritual erosion. Somebody says spiritual erosion. Some believers have even lost their godly perspective. I will start begging sin to go away. Sweet. I begging sin to go Spiritual erosion. Because we are coming from a battle. The sooner you accept this, the better you will be. Our focus has shifted from the world to the world. Somebody says spiritual erosion. Our sinful nature resurfaced as our spirits suffocate. Somebody says spiritual erosion. You got eroded in the midst of a battle. But thank God to say No must have gone and sugi na maru say call. U say call nuglungisa. Our enemy Satan raised the bar in launching a new attack against the church. Now, as a result of an ongoing battle we have with the environment that is created by COVID-19, most people's lives are never the same. 
Your life is not the same as compared to life pre-COVID-19. We all have lost something or the other. All of us. Most of us surprisingly lost their loved ones due to COVID-19. And here you are, you were never even given a chance to make any adjustments. You suddenly have been, have been thrown into a deep end, totally unprepared. Mother Lento is unprepared, so as the world. Now, when under attack, every time when somebody's under attack, you can accidentally slip away from your position. The more we are shift we shift the heat of the pickle. The more she say be, we are called Some of us have become pickle weary. Could I suppose really for the past five months? Didn't see Madame Kuzilu Bruniya. The environment says Shinchi. Some people are affected psychologically because a hug does something to you. You are now told not to hug each other. You are missing something. After COVID-19, you are going to have a lot of mental cases. People are going to experience mental breakdowns. We are affected. Not only spiritually, but psychologically. Sometimes a hug will do. Sometimes you feel you miss a hug. You begin to value just a simple hug. You realize how much meaningful a hug is. So when you are in battle, you can accidentally slip away and move from your position without you realizing. There are many believers. Some of, uh, some of them are here. Some of them are watching me. They can hear me from Facebook, from YouTube. You are there. You know I have slipped away accidentally. And say, Quenta Wenya. And say, Kolauti. So you accidentally move from the position of conviction to the position of convenience. I want to just move, but you are looking for an easy way out. You go to church for the sake of going to church, not for the sake of connection. So in that way, you unconsciously switch from living mode to a survival mode. Kuna pastor who was struggling to keep their heads above the water spiritually. Bafunukuya marakunzeba. Inchalo impi. Omas yempi ni songes hambagash. Mas buyempi ni esnyes hambagash, esnyes yalimpa, esnyes hambang esisu, esinye. Esnyes feel as penalimpi. That's the nature of a battle. But I missed all this. God is calling all of us to repentance. God says, wake up church. When I punished Egypt, I promoted the church. When I punished Egypt, I promoted the church. Wake up. These are supposed to be exciting moments for the church. This is not the time to panic with the world, but a time of promotion for the church. The Lord is elevating the blood of Christ. We have been launched into a new season. COVID-19 does not signal the end of the church but the end of the church as it used to be. And it's the, it is the rebirth of the church as it ought to be. And it is in this season, it is the end of the church as it used to be. In this season, it is a rebirth of the church as it ought to be. The church is no more wearing the same identity. The, same, the church is no longer wearing the same face. The face of the church has been altered. 
There's a new glory that has come in. There's a new move. We've been elevated to the highest dimension. When God punishes the world, he promotes the church. Jesus says, occupy until I come. There's a prophetic shift. We are not where we used to be. There's a prophetic shift. There's a new spiritual normal. God says, my church, wake up. Your spiritual position has been compromised. And God says, my child, get back on track because I'm about to do a new thing. Get back on track. Don't sit there and panic. Don't sit there and get frustrated. Don't sit there and try to make new plans. Your plans are with me. I'm launching you into a new season. Stop thinking about new plans. Your plans are with him. Step into a season. The question is, what is the state of your spirituality? See, we have been to check. What is the state of your spirituality? Be honest. Let's look at the book of Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. This is the Apostle Paul speaking to the Ephesian church. There were beckles in Ephesus. There were beckles. And Apostle Paul was addressing the church that was in the firing line of a beckle. And in verse 17 it says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in the futility of their mind. That's verse 17. Paul says, don't continue to walk in the futility of your mind. When your spirit is eroded, you lose spiritual sensitivity. And you begin to be ruled by the mind. That is what it means to walk in the futility of the mind. You begin to be ruled by the mind and not by the Holy Ghost anymore. In verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Having their understanding darkened, once you are alienated from God, everything that was once alive becomes dead. Paul says, don't be alienated from God. Don't be alienated from the life of God. When you do that, spiritual blindness attacks you. Don't be alienated. God says, I call my people to come to me. Repentance. A call to repentance. Don't be alienated. There are many believers who have moved from being spiritually connected to being spiritually alienated. I did explain what alienation means. When you are spiritually alienated, you are, not, you, are, you, you are not disconnected from the covenant. However, you are disconnected from the connection. You are disconnected from the covenant flow, but not from the covenant itself. So Paul says, don't be alienated from the life of God. But don't be alienated from the life of God. So there are believers who have moved from being spiritually connected to being spiritually alienated. The word alienated from God comes from the root word alien. Who are now aliens. It comes from the word alien, meaning foreigner and stranger. God don't want us to be strangers in his presence. To be refreshed by God. Reconnect. Reconnect. Again, Focus on reconnection. There's a wall of alienation that has been built because of your battle weariness. The word alienation comes from the Greek word apolutrio, which means estrange. Kurabazan was estranged to God. It means to be shut out from intimacy. Kurabazan was shut out from the intimacy with God. That's being estranged. It's being alienated from God. Now, God says repent. What is repentance? Repentance is a decisive change of direction. It's a decisive change of direction. Break the wall of alienation and reconnect. Consciously decide to change direction. In repentance, Uguti, 
Ben yale. Sengi yale. Impi ikwen se kutu la selwe itrek. Impi chiche direction yako. God says papam. Repent. Ausa petanga yo. Nga fumeli ama ngeba wase mpi na kususe gini. Kuna basa lani wa disconnected from God. Because banesa ama ngeba wase mpi. Your main source of life is God. Stop the alienation. Break the alienation wall as a child of God. Repentance is a 360 degree change. 360. It's a complete change from one extreme to another. That's a 360. You are going that way. So a complete change from one extreme to the other extreme. That is 360 degree. That's repentance. Impi ik shifty lego position yak. Yaku said I went wrong. I was safun into us gangunku so fun into sak. Change direction. Alufununkunku. Seek the kingdom. Then these things. This of Latin. God wants us to radically turn around so as to return back to Him. It is a full circle change. It is a wholehearted change, not a half-hearted change. Most of us are confused. The Bible says in the beginning, God. There's a wall of alienation. So God wants us to turn away from the position of alienation to the position of connection. He wants us to return to himself. When you remain estranged from God, you begin to experience strange outcomes. Because you are estranged from God. But alienation is not losing God. But alienation is losing the connection. You are losing the network. They have lost the network of connection. But they are still saved. But they have lost the network. They are alienated. They are now strangers. They are now foreign. They become aliens to God. Yet they are in God. In Christianity, don't ever circle for the label when you can have the connection. Don't circle for covenant without connection. It is a connection that ensures continuation in Christ. In those of Twala, who to move it from glory to glory, from power to power, it is not alienation but connection. The sooner you connect and reconnect back to God, reconnect back to the socket of the kingdom, the sooner you do that, we are also moving from glory to glory. What will ensure your spiritual continuation is a spiritual connection. Reconnect back to God. We ask Bongasa Kulegi, came back your prayer life. We ask Bongasa Fundi Isri, claim back your word life. We ask Bongasana faith, claim back your faith. Build your faith again. Do it again. The same way you did it then, you can do it again. Don't waste time in alienation. Because you are going to die slowly spiritually. But reconnect. God says repent. To repent is to Turn away so we can return to God. And that's why when we read the book of Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk in him. It does not say walk with him. It's not enough to walk with God. You need to walk with God in God. Walk with him and walk in him. So the Bible says, as you have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, walk in him. In verse 7, rooted and built up in him. When you are rooted in Christ, your figure is a storm. Your figure is simple. Your figure is Remain rooted in Christ. Put to Paula in the book of Philippians 3, verse number 9. Paul says, I want to be found in him, 
not having my own righteousness. So it's not enough to walk with God. You have to walk in Him and you must be found in Him. I want to be found in Him. This message is about God calling us to Himself again. We are born with tick of Nabanda shifted, but shift to his simpi. I don't want to have a full shift. Uma Ustalis Catilapo, Ustas the Upele Lue Unembeza. Gunes in the Obongebu Zenze, Ustas in the Sea, Manjuma Kalaso Zenza, Ungabino Nembeza, Oxola. The longer you stay in alienation, the bad it will be for you. You can be with him, but still not connected to him. Well, Adam and Eve, they remained in Eden for some time, even though they were no longer with him. I mean, even though they were no longer in him, even though they were already un- alienated from him, but they sticked around in Eden. So it's possible that we are not going to go. It is stickability. That will ensure spiritual sustainability. You need to stick again to Christ. If you stick to him, you'll be sustained in him. It is a connection that ensures continual fruitfulness. Jesus says, for without me, you can do nothing. I like this in the message version. It reads as follows. John 15, verse 5. Saying the Jesus says, I'm the vine. You are the branches. When you are joined with me and I with you, the relationship is intimate and organic. When you are joined with me and I in you, the relationship is intimate and organic. When something is organic, it is authentic. It is genuine. It is a relationship that flows from who you are, not from who you pretend to be. The relationship becomes spontaneous. It becomes organic. Get back to that position. Because the relationship it's organic. Nature. Usalu connected no tiko must be your second nature. Who yell a lapo? Satan don't tell you something. It is out of a connection and not convenience that we can sustain and grow in our relationship with God. Adam no Eva, they failed to sustain the relationship with God, even though they were conveniently geographically positioned, but they were still spiritually alienated. Geographically, they were eating. Spiritually, they were alienated. Geographically, they were not eating. They were not eating. They were not eating. They were Spiritually, they are foreigners. When God searches for you, and has a totally, totally alien, you are now a stranger. God looked for Adam back home. Adam and Eve, where are you? God looked for them back home. Unkulukul maganga kufunu kona. Gelu reconnect. We ask unkul mangan. We ask gata was. We ask gelu reconnect. We ask uwe bupi. We ask la uwe kono dumis. Jesus ya buya. We ask uwe bupi. We ask la uwe kona. God is calling us to repentance. We ask aleni ukuti be normal ukuti wenzi son. We ask aleni ukuti la tega lo conscious. We ask aleni buye la la kande kono dumis. God wants you back. So Adam and Eve, they were in his presence, but away from his person. They were in his presence, but away from his person. Abraham started obeying the presence of God, but away from the person of God. That's the pain of alienation. The scriptures are clear. The verse is saying us. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse five. The Bible says, "Not that we are sufficient of ourselves." To think of anything as being from ourselves. But our sufficiency is from God. Say my sufficiency is from God. 
say my sufficient is from God. Mas kuma ng sufficient it is a state of being good enough. A state of being good enough to achieve purpose. Sufficient is the state. It's a state of being good enough. Fit for purpose. So our sufficiency is not from church activities. Our sufficiency is from God. I can participate as one doing, but my sufficiency is not from the church. My sufficiency is from God. I can participate in higher dimension, but my sufficiency is from God. Your sense of spiritual sufficiency is as a result of spiritual connection. Your sense of spiritual sufficiency is as a result of spiritual connection. You can fake commitment, but you can never fake connection. You know yourself. We have I've moved away. I've shifted, man. to be in the because God is calling us. This message is about that and nothing else. God is calling us back to Himself. He's calling us back to Himself. Let's close our eyes. Thank you, Lord. Bawona dila segi yoku luha. Bolwe lili swen Saludi Fundi Suguti Mayenze Inta Doya Sisa Vana Mekho Sonke Nsambe Ukona Umtuana Ngunungun And you know, oh, do you know what? Because of the beckle I can tell I'm, I've shifted from my place of destiny. I want to reconnect back to Ngulungu. Ngulungu is now so I can say a prayer over you. Ngulungu is now so I can... You say, I'm still a child of God, but I realize I disconnected. I'm alienated from God. God bless you. 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 Lift up your right hand. Say these words after me. Say, Lord God, I thank you for your word. I reconnect back to you. By your grace. I cannot do it by my own power. It is not by my might. It is by your grace. And by your spirit. I return back to you. I break the wall. Of separation. I break the wall. Of alienation. Oh Lord. Don't take away your spirit from me. I repent and I reconnect. I repent and I reconnect. I thank you, Lord, for re-embracing me. If I come near to you, you'll come near to me. Thank you, Lord, for coming near to me. I'm never the same again. I'm standing in faith. I'm reconnected. My prayer life is restored. My word life is restored. My walk with Christ is well positioned in the name of Jesus. You are the God of my restoration. Oh God, restore me. Restore my spiritual health. Restore my spiritual vitality. Lord, I pray and I receive by your grace. Help me, Holy Spirit, to craft this relationship. Help me, help me Holy Spirit, to regain my prayer life. I rebuild my prayer altar. Holy Spirit, convict me to pray Convict me to read the word. 
Convict me to believe your word again. I can do it again by your help. Thank you, Lord. I'm never the same again. In Jesus' name. And let the church say, Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. God bless you. God bless you. We've come to the end of our message. And those that want to give, you can go left and you can go right. Both directions. There are areas now. Pulaong and Nigella corner. Amen. And those that want to give their tithes, just come up. Just come up so that we can minister. We're not going to touch you, but we're just going to speak over you. If you have your tithe, you want to give to the Lord, just come up in front so I can declare blessing of the Lord.